Hey, hello everyone and welcome to Extreme Graphics Tech. My name is Angelo and on today's video I want to talk to you about the Ryzen 1600 in 2024. Yeah, I know I do a lot of videos about uh, old stuff in, you know, in whatever year I am on, but I didn't I wasn't looking to make this video specifically, I have to be honest. The only reason I'm making it is because I had to buy an all Ryzen CPU because my one of my motherboards, one of AM4 motherboards, uh, I was flashing and the flashing failed and it died. So I was able to, because it had dual flash um, BIOS, I had no issues. But the issue I encountered is that uh, all my CPUs are uh, Series 3000 or onwards so this the the recovery bias flash for that motherboard was still on the first version and being an ax an x370 it meant that it only supported ryzen 1000 so i couldn't boot anyway so i needed a cheap processor cpu in order to be able to recover the flash and then flash it back to the latest version which supports all cpus and so for that, I went looking on the internet to see or check the prices of Ryzen CPUs. And I found out that this Ryzen 1600 costs only $32. Compared to the 14 or the 1300, they were at around $28 or $30. And I thought, hmm, this is two more cores and is, you know, six cores, 12 thread for only uh, two do two or four dollars more. Yeah, I, I I prefer to buy this because at the end of the day I always use CPUs for other jobs like you know for a NAS server for a multimedia server to encode video to do other tasks So the more cores the better it was for me However, as we know Ryzen the first generation of Ryzen wasn't like the best for gaming and they were revolutionary when they were they launched in 2017 because they were bringing lots of cores to people for a little um, money, because all things compared to Intel that was selling like six and eight core as a premium product. Ryzen changed all these and put six and eight cores at prices that Intel wasn't even close. Of course, first generation Ryzen, because of the way it works, it was chiplets and so on, uh, had lots of latency issues, memory issues, and it, it was a work in progress, so it had some issues. So for gaming, it was not the best CPU. For productivity, if you had, you know, you were encoding videos and so on, it, it was much better than having a four core CPU if you had like an eight or something like that. So they were good for certain tasks, but not general. It was on the Ryzen 3000 that actually they got very good also for gaming. Not that they were bad, but Intel was still ahead in that at that period. So by having this CPU and having to test it, I thought, okay, I, I had two questions. Is six cores enough for today's gaming? And uh, is Ryzen, you know, first generation still good in 2024? And for that, of course, I'm going to do some benchmarks. So here, we, here they are, and then I will come with my final talk. And so the first game I tested was Horizon Forbidden West. I was honestly not expecting this game to be this good. As you can see, we are over 70 FPS, 80 FPS. However, there are areas where it can drop down to up to 55. However, these are not like momentary drops that just stay and go up and down, making the game feels like laggy, actually. I don't know, the way the game works or the download work, it always feels kind of smooth even if you're going under 60. I guess it's, as you can see the frame time and frame rate is quite stable so I was surprised by the performance that I got out of this chip on this first game so quite interesting result from my point of view. Then of course what is a test without Dying Light 2 and in this case I'm using the RT preset just to put more pressure on the CPU and you can see there is 75 uh, percent utilization of the CPU and in this case also once again we are above 60 FPS however I have to mention once again that there are places where it will go down but generally the game per performs quite well considering that I have RT uh, on probably without it it will be even more stable I have to say this is a game that is very well optimized CPU wise and everything and uh, so you are not going to have any issues to playing this game above 60 FPS. Of course, remember this Ryzen 1600 is not a CPU for high frame rate. I think anything to uh, up to 60 and you are good. 
Ghost of Tsushima is another good game that is very well optimized and here you can see we are playing in high preset and the GPU is not super loaded and the CPU is only like a 50%. Even though that's the situation, there were areas in the game where it could go down to like 50s for some reason. But as you can see, the frame time and frame rate is quite stable, so it feels quite smooth. It's never like stutteries or anything like that. So the 1600 is quite capable of keeping up with this game. And that's, com you know... It you can understand it because this is a game that was born by to the PlayStation 4 and we know that the CPU on PlayStation 4 was very, very weak. So a Ryzen 1600 is probably magnitudes better than that. So that's a good result in this case. But then we have the first game that was taught for the actual for the current generation of console and this is a starfield and there was no way at least in open areas uh, in closed uh, parts you can get up to 60 but in open areas you're not going to see those 60 fps at any point or even close unless you're looking at the sky so normally will stay at around 45 to 50 fps which for a vrr monitor is okay but it's something that you will have to take uh, into consideration no 60 fps in that case that's until we activate frame generation and this is where i see how useful this technology become for weak cpus like this because after activating frame generation we were always above 60 fps and yes you, it doesn't feel as you know 70 80 fps but it feels better than 40 fps that we were using before it feels smooth and of course you are not seeing that through the uh, image because i'm recording at 60 and this sort of technology requires a VR monitor to enjoy it better. And the frame time is not telling you the whole story because uh, the way it records the frame generation is a bit weird, but I can tell you it felt very smooth and very good to play at. And so after that, I went to Cyberpunk. And in this case, I'm using the Ultra preset, no ray tracing or anything. And you can see there that the GPU is barely utilized, but the CPU is up to the roof. It's using like 80 percent of the cpu so as you can see in this situation um cyberpunk will go between like 45 to 70 fps and it will go up and down it's not terrible but you know those it's not a, a constant 60 it's not a stable frame rate so unfortunately the ryzen 1600 will not deliver you those um those frames that we may be looking for but now comes the interesting part, because now I'm using RT uh, Ultra Preset, but in this case I activated frame generation, and now we can go up to 90 FPS and it feels really, really good. And I, this is weird because the CPU utilization should have gone higher, right? Well, the truth is in this case that because I'm using now DLSS balance instead of quality, then the amount of rays it has to calculate is lower than if I was using quality or native resolution. And because I have frame generation on, then all these things together come together to give you RT Ultra Preset at more than 60 FPS on a Ryzen 1600. This technology is just amazing. And a game that uses ray tracing, even if you don't have a GPU that supports ray tracing, is Avatar. So, in this, and this is a game that either the CPU behaves or it doesn't. And here, well, it's sort of do. So in some areas, it's going to be at above 60 FPS, as you can see here, and the GPU being the limitation. But there are some areas where the 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 GPU um the CPU will go under 40, say 50%. I would try to keep the GPU not being the bottleneck, but uh, I couldn't actually, it seems like I always was trying. So I'm not quite sure here, but I think the Ryzen 1600 will not always deliver 60 FPS on every case. And finally, this is a game I thought all the way to that was not going to run at 60 FPS no matter what. And as you can see here, no problem for the Ryzen 1600, and no frame generation, no nothing like that. So I just 36% utilization, which means this is a game that uses or depends more on the GPU than the CPU. So, so far, this old chip, seven year old chip with only six core has behaved quite good. And in those situations where it could not, you have frame generation to help you out. So I will say that from my point of view, I, I am kind of surprised and... I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting, honestly, much, much worse. Okay, so as you see, I have to say, to begin with, that I did overclock the CPU to uh, 3850. 
It's a very easy process. Anyone can do it. Uh, of course, not everybody will get to the same speed. So you may get 3,700 or you can get more than mine. But 3,700 should be easily doable by anyone that has a Ryzen 1600. Okay. Having said that, I have to say I am, I, I am more surprised than I was expecting to. Because I was expecting the, the CPU to be really, really struggling in most games. But I didn't find that. Many games I can play at least at 60 FPS. And other games I can play at more than 60 FPS. So by testing this, there are two things that I came up with. The first question is, yes, I think 6 core is enough. But not Ryzen first generation 6 cores. I think 6 core is like a sweet spot between price and performance. We have seen this, for example, with the 7600 from AMD. It's a 6 core CPU that actually is faster sometimes than even the 5800 X3D. Talking about gaming, I don't know in productivity or multitask, we'll have to test. But the 7600 has proved that it's more than capable to play at a very good level. So I think 6 cores is still very good, even though I would recommend if you're doing the investment to go to at least 8 cores. But 6 cores should keep you playing no problems at above 60 FPS at any game on the market. However, that's not the case for the Ryzen 1600, because even though many games did work at above 60 FPS, we also saw some games that were not able to get to that uh, minimum that many people are looking for, like in Starfield or um, what was the other game? Cyberpunk. OK, so, for example, those two games, we were not able to get a uh, stable or constant 60 FPS on Starfield. We were not able even touch 60 FPS, which is, you know, is all the CPU is able to do. However, the interesting part is to see how technology help us to, you know, jump or ab avoid that limitation. Because this gave me the perfect scenario then from when frame generation is actually so useful. And that's when your CPU obviously is not able to. Because when I activated frame generation on Starfield and I activated frame generation on Cyberpunk, we were able to play on both games at above 60 FPS. Yes, I know using fake frames, but it is better than not playing at 60 FPS. And I wouldn't say that it is exactly or it feels exactly like playing at 60 FPS, but it's a point in between. So from my point of view, it's better to play at those frame rates with frame regeneration than to play at, you know, less uh, uh, frames per second. So it's interesting that nowadays you can, you know, if you are short on money and you don't know exactly what to buy, I'm not telling you to buy a Ryzen first generation. What I'm saying is that when you're shopping even for new parts, it's quite interesting that you can say, well, I don't need the fastest CPU because in worst case scenario, I can always use frame generation. So I will put more money towards the GPU to have something more robust, something that would allow me to uh, get better frame rates, better quality, better resolution. So it's interesting that we have all these sort of combinations now, right? That you can, we can shop smart and not, you know, for the fastest or the best because we can now think of how or depending on the games we want to play, you know, the advantages that something like frame generation can leverage if we don't have like the fastest CPU. So in this case, uh, you know, you, you can put together a machine with a 1600, um, an AMD card, any that uh, support FSR at 3.1 frame generation, or, well, I, I wouldn't recommend you to buy a Ryzen 1600 to pair it with our RTX 4000 series, but it is possible, you know, is there, there, there is the option and you will be leveraging um, some um, utilities. But I wouldn't recommend it, okay? So I'm just saying that. But my point with all of this is to see how the CPU, you know, is better than I thought it was going to be considering it's seven years old and it wasn't the best for gaming and, you know, I was expecting worse. And, it's, you know, six real core, 12 thread, it can be very useful for many other tasks like uh, editing, SEG, uh, video encoding. You know, there is a lot of other things that the CPU can excel at. And combined with gaming, if you're light on gaming, well, you can do it. Of course, I'm not telling you to invest now in a dead platform like AM4. Let that in the sense that, you know, even though some CPUs are still coming, you know, they are not going to release actual new CPUs. There are more rehashes of all CPUs. But if you have an AM4 around or you get it somewhere because, you know, somebody at your neighbor is giving it for you for cheap, 
it can still be quite a decent CPU to game and to use a lot of other, you know, say, um, um, faculty. Like you can make a a, a a emulation machine. You can make a you know light gaming system, a productivity system. You can give it to you know somebody that is just starting to use, and it would be quite a decent computer. I was very surprised. At how well, it's still the sixteen hundred today. So yeah, that's my take on the two on this. Uh, it was a nice experiment. And I have two more videos coming very soon that I'm very excited to test because it belongs to a couple of GPUs that I always have. Thinking about one of them I always wanted to have, but I couldn't afford it until recently. So now I have it and I want to test it. Uh, so wait for those. I'm not going to say which ones are, but yes, that's, that's it. I hope you like this video and see you on the next one.